So welcome everybody. Uh, our speaker today is Konstantin Adler from, uh, from Erlangen Nuremberg University. And uh, uh, Konstantin is now a postdoc in Erlangen. And he recently, I think in February, he finished his PhD um, under supervision, su supervision of Hanno Salman. And he will talk today about, uh, I think, work related to, to this project with Hanno, yes? yes. So about supercartan geometry, loop quantum gravity, and applications. So, Konstantin, please. Thank you, Wojtek. And also, thank you very much for the, in, uh, for the invitation and for uh, giving me the opportunity to present my work, which I've done in trying collaboration with Hanno Salman, which is about geometric aspects of uh, supergravity adapted to loop quantum gravity and also applications in the context of uh, cosmology and black holes. Um, cannot, yeah. Before, before I uh, go over to the main part of my talk, at the beginning, I would like to give a brief introduction to uh, loop quantum gravity and also supersymmetry and also on the status quo of uh, how to combine loop quantum gravity with the principle of supersymmetry. Now, uh, loop quantum gravity starts with the, uh, with the discovery of, by, by Ashtika, who found that general relativity can be formulated in a way such that the non-reduced syntactic phase space of canonical theory is that of SO2 Youngness gauge theory. And interestingly, it also has been found that this also uh, can be is possible in higher by space time dimensions found by Bodendorfer, Thiemann, and Tour. But in context of four space time dimensions, one finds that this uh, arises from the so-called host action of gravity. And host action can be regarded as a one parameter family of deformed actions of first order Einstein gravity. So the host action consists in, uh, of the uh, standard uh, first, order, uh, first order term, uh, also called the Palatini term, which depends on the so-called co-frame E, which contracted with, uh, which has some internal index, the Lorentz index, which contracted with the Minkowski metric gives some metric on space-time. So this is why I call you one cause this a first order formalism. And omega some Lorentz connection and plus some additional beta dependent term. The beta is the so-called Mesi parameter. And this term turns out to be topological at second order if one plugs in the equations of motion of omega. So this is a purely topological term in second order, and this is why this leads back to the same equations of motion of Einstein gravity. And now look on gravity in the canonical approach. One starts with a, a, a with a three plus one decomposition of the metric uh, of, uh, of the of the of the action. So one assumes that the space time is globally hyperbolic, so it's sort of from R times uh, some three dimensional Cauchy slice. In that way, one arrives at this formula where the, uh, the three plus one decomposition of the host action. And the dynamical variables turn out to be uh, the so-called ashtika barbeo variables, where A is some SU2 gauge field, also called the Ashtika connection, and it's canonically conjugate momentum, which is also called the gravitational electric field, which, and which depends on the frame fields and on sigma. And additionally, one gets certain constraints. One has on one hand the Gauss constraint, which generates uh, infinitesimal uh, gauge transformations, also the morphism constraint, which generates uh, spatial diffeomorphisms and the Hamiltonian constraint, which governs the dynamics of the theory. And then it follows that by imposing for the constraints on the phase space and studying the Hamiltonian equations of motions, this leads back to the Einstein field equations. And now based on the observation that uh, this gives kinematically the phase space the structure of S2 on this gauge theory, this from then proposes quantization techniques inspired by lattice QCD. And as a result, it follows that the basic building blocks of the theory of the quantum theory are described in terms of so-called spin network states. And these have actually already uh, been uh, proposed by uh, works of Penrose and then found independently now in Lucon Ready framework in terms of spin nets, which are associated to the two gauge invariant functionals. And these are represented in terms of graphs, which are embedded in space and with uh, consistent edges, which uh, are labeled by spin quantum numbers, J, corresponding to the SU2 gauge group, and which intersect in certain vertices. And now it follows that these states uh, form a basis of the Hilbert space, it's also called the Ashtika Lewandowski Hilbert space, which is some inductive limit of Hilbert space associated to graphs, which can be re expressed in terms of a two space on some generalized set of connections and equipped with the Ashtika Lewandowski measure. And just to give an example, this is, a, uh, this is one possible form of such a spin network state, which corresponds now to two trivalent vertices, which uh, 
you know, two triangular vertices carrying certain spin quantum numbers j, and then these can be expressed in terms of matrix coefficients corresponding to these representations and the and these uh, matrix coefficients contracted with some intertwiner to get gauge invariant quantities. Okay, now, so far this was a brief review on uh, group on gravity. Now, my motivation was to uh, combine the uh, loop on gravity with uh, the concept of supersymmetry. And the reason is that uh, because we have actually these, uh, we have two very prominent approaches to, uh, to formulate a quantum theory of gravity. On one hand, we have a super string theory, and on the other hand, we have IQG. But in my opinion, if a quantum theory really exists, uh, it actually has to be unique. So there has to be a, a relation between these two approaches. And if one would be able to find such a link, you can then apply ideas and techniques from one approach to the other. And uh, since uh, supersymmetry plays such, a, such an essential role in, uh, in superstring theory, uh, the main uh, possibility to achieve this would be to combine accuracy with supersymmetry. And for instance, supergravity theories appear as low energy limits of certain superstring theories. So the first, um, the first starting point to find such a link would be to apply accuracy techniques to supergravity. And this was the guiding uh, idea of my, of my work. But uh, briefly to supersymmetry. Now, supersymmetry historically arose from the famous uh, Coleman Mandela theorem, which states that the most general idea uh, of symmetries of the scattering matrix in quantum field theory for an interacting quantum field theory is given by the direct sum of space time symmetries and internal symmetries. And this is a direct sum of Lie algebra, so there's no mixture between internal symmetries and space time symmetries. So, in order to overcome this, it actually seems to be that one has to uh, introduce a new kind of symmetry. And this was the result of Harkov, Shansky, and Sonios, who found that uh, this can be circumvented by considering so called super Lie algebras, or set two graded algebras, where now the Lie algebra decomposes into an even part G0, which is the standard bosonic part one usually considers in a quantum field theory, plus now some additional fermionic contribution, G0, G1, which is what's called uh, And uh, on this algebra, one has a, a commutator, a bracket, which reduces the standard commutator on G0, and anti commutator on G1. And also has to satisfy some graded variation version of the Jacobi identity, which accounts to the fact that the Lie algebra has to be some infinitesimal version of some global object, such, such, such as a group object. Then, by studying this kind of symmetries, one finds that the most general uh, Lie algebra of symmetries, uh, the, uh, which contain a uh, super Lie algebra, which contains the, uh, the Poincare symmetries given by the super Poincaré algebra in case of a vanishing cosmological constant or the super ante algebra, also called the autosymplectic algebra, OSP1 slash four, in case of a non-vanishing cosmological constant. And in both cases, this decomposes into an even part G0, which is the standard Poincaré algebra generated by space-time translations and Lorentz transformations, and some additional odd contribution, G1, which is now generated by a fermionic generator Q-alpha, which turns out to be a Majorana speedrun. And now this new generator uh, satisfies these additional anti-commutation relations, the commutation and the commutation relations, respectively. And also one can introduce further fermionic generators to the theory. So in this case, the generator is labeled by some additional label R, which is the R symmetry index. In that case, one calls this an unextended supersymmetry. And L here is some length scale, also called the undersitter radius in case of a non managing cosmological constant. And then by studying this kind of symmetry, one finds that uh, a quantum field theory which satisfies this kind of symmetry necessarily has to contain an equal amount of both bosonic and fermionic mm -hmm. freedom. This arises from the fact that now this generator Q alpha is fermionic and transforms it in terms of a spinner, so it interrelates bosonic and fermionic particle species. So quantum field theory satisfying this kind of symmetry has to, uh, has to contain an equal amount of fermionic and, and bosonic particle species. In the context of gravity, one then finds that uh, this leads to initial matter, contribu uh, matter contribution. So in, in a one context, besides the spin two graviton, one also has additional spin three half fermion, also called the gravitino. But I will uh, explain this uh, a bit more geometrically later on, how this uh, fermionic field arises in this context. Now, actually there exists already various uh, results now uh, on uh, how, combine, how to combine uh, local gravity with the principle of supersymmetry. For instance, the uh, study of the canonical supergravity at Debit LKG has been the uh, first time considered by Jacobson. And this way, one has found some hidden gauge symmetry in the constraint algebra, some enlarged supersymmetry in the constraint algebra. 
And based on this, uh, quantization of the theory has been proposed, but the considerations remained rather formal. And also, the origin of the system symmetry remained unclear. And also, this was unclear how this could be generalized to include, uh, for instance, extended supersymmetric field theories. But uh, also, canonical theory of high dimensional supergravity theories have been, uh, have been considered by Bodendorfer, Thiemann, and Tuan, but there the supersymmetry was not treated in a manifest way, leading to a formalism in which uh, the constraints are very complex, a complicated structure, which made it hard, quite hard to uh, study concrete physical applications. And so the idea of my work was to follow the ideas of the previous work and uh, somehow understand this uh, hidden gauge symmetry in the theory. And with a few towards generalizations, in particular, for which values of the music parameter does this symmetry arise, and whether we could also uh, uh, generalize this to higher, uh, higher extended supersymmetry. And finally, uh, how about boundary theory? So, can we include uh, also the boundary theory, for instance, to study uh, black holes and AQG? And all this I would like to put on a mathematical rigorous uh, foundation. So, in what follows, I would like to describe how supergravity can be uh, can be geometrically understood by a Cartan geometry. Then I will give a duration of the host, so, uh, so-called host McDonald Mansui action for supergravity for arbitrary uh, values of the Bavari music parameter. Then I will talk about extensions to higher uh, n extended supersymmetry, and then also the, I will include the discussion about the boundary theory. And then I will also point out special properties of the self dual theory. And then finally, I will talk about uh, briefly about uh, the quantum theory, so about super spin network states and the super area operator. And finally, we'll give an outlook on applications in the context of black holes. Okay. But first, since this turns out to be the starting point to study supergravity, I first would like to give a review on how to interpret gravity in terms of Cartan geometry, because this gives a very nice geometric interpretation, also gives a strong link between uh, gravity and Younger's gauge theory. Which turned out to be quite useful in a supersymmetric setting. Now, uh, the Cartan geometry is based uh, on the famous idea of Felix Klein and his famous Elan program, who studied the possibility to classify geometry of space for the underlying group of symmetries. So, for instance, you could consider Minkowski space time. And then you can consider the, uh, the isometry group, which is given by the uh, Pongary group. So, the and uh, then you can fix a certain space time event P on the, on the on Minkowski space time and then consider the subgroup of these asymmetries which preserve that point. These are given by the uh, Lorentz group. And if you the quotient out the Lorentz group out of the Poincare group, you find that this is indeed isomorphic to Minkowski space time again. So Minkowski space time has the equivalent description in terms of the underlying group of symmetries given by the Poincare group and Lorentz group. And this pair you call a Klein geometry. So based on this observation now that uh, flat Minkowski space-time has an equivalent description in terms of uh, a Klein geometry, Cartan studied a geometric uh, approach to gravity by generalizing appropriately a Klein geometry by allowing for curvature. Just as gravity is a deformed version of flat Minkowski space and just as gravity can be regarded as a deformed version of flat Minkowski space-time. So in this formalism, we now start as it considers a gauge field A which is, is, is defined on space-time and takes values in the full Poincaré algebra. And then you can decompose it by rejecting onto the uh, translational part, which gives some so-called co-frame E and some additional Lorentz contribution, which is, uh, which is a Lorentz connection. And then it turns out that this translational, uh, translation, uh, translational part, this co-frame E, as I explained uh, at the beginning, now by contracting this internal index with the Minkowski metric, it's a metric on a Minkowski space-time, uh, on the space-time manifold, sorry. And furthermore, it follows that this uh, co-frame leads to a local identification of the tangent spaces of the space-time manifold with the tangent spaces of the underlying client geometry, which here, just for visualization, I have uh, depicted here in terms of a ball. And also, because A is now a gauge field, you can study its induced parallel transport and also, this has a very clear and beautiful uh, geometric interpretation because this paratransport map can be regarded as uh, unro unrolling this uh, Klein geometry along the space time manifold. So, uh, this gives, uh, so this is a very beautiful geometric interpretation arising from this kind of geometric formulation. And in fact, one can even push this formalism even further and use this gauge field A to, in order to formulate a young mist type action principle for gravity. 
But uh, to this end, it turns out one actually needs a non true cosmological constant lambda, but this is not completely true. One can actually also uh, analyze this to, to vanishing cosmological constant, but in that case, one has to consider so called uh, Maxwell algebras, which is another possible generalization, the Lorentz algebra. But uh, here I will now stick to a cosmological constant. And then uh, here in this case, the Klein geometry is given by this, the Sitter space or under the Sitter space, respectively. And then it was found by McDowell and Mansouri that the first order Einstein gravity action plus some additional boundary terms can be re-expressed in terms of a young list type action, this young list type action principle. So an FHF type action with F, the curvature of field strength induced by this gauge field A. And now so the internal indices and this extra factor, some reinterpretation, re, uh, reinterpretation made by us, the internal indices contracted with respect to some inner product on the under the Zeta algebra. Now, using this reinterpretation by contracting these internal indices with this uh, inner product, one then finds this can also be extended to host gravity. In that case, uh, when this inner product is replaced by some beta deformed version. So there'd be some beta deformed inner product on the under the algebra, which is induced some, by some beta dependent operator, which, depend, which is uh, constructed out of gamma matrices with a beta D and mesi parameter. And again, by expanding this, one finds that this leads, leads back to uh, the host action of gravity plus some additional boundary terms. Now, so far, this was the geometric interpretation of host gravity in terms of a Cartan geometry. Now, it turns out that this can be nicely uh, generalized to the supersymmetric setting in a very natural way. In this context, also the boundary theory turns out to be quite special because supersymmetry fixes, in fact, the boundary theory in a unique way. I will explain this. Not false. Uh, are there questions so far? Okay, then let me proceed. So we now move everything to the supersymmetric setting and now describe ADS supergravity in terms of a supercardian geometry which is more modeled on a super client geometry corresponding to super under the space. So we have the super under the algebra and the uh, isotropy subgroup, which is given by the spin group. And then again, you have a, a super Cartan connection, which is again defined on space time, but now it takes values on the full super under the zeta algebra. And again, then we can again decompose it by projecting onto the uh, fermionic contribution, onto the uh, bosonic contributions which again gives the co-frame E arising from the translational parts, plus some additional uh, 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 contribution from this spinorous uh, subcomponents. So there's a spin connection omega. And now since we have a super algebra, we also have additional co what contribution of the algebra. And this gives a, a spin of field psi, which is a spin three half, uh, so a spin three half field and also for the Dashwinger field. So in the supersymmetric setting, it now falls that this supercurrent connection encodes both uh, bosonic and fermionic particle species. And then using this uh, supercurrent connection, again, we can formulate a young list of action principle for supergravity. And for the n equal one case, this has been studied, for instance, uh, by treating the Babel Hermes parameter in terms of theta ambiguity by Obregon, Ortega Cruz, and Zabido. And also recently, I got aware of uh, the works of uh, Kowalski, Klickmann, mm. Turka, and uh, Stachakor, who studied the N equal one supergravity formulation for, uh, mm. uh, and McDermott's in this cartan geometric uh, approach by uh, constrained PS theory. And we have described in terms of a host, uh, in terms of this beta deformed inner product. And now I would like to explain this to you. So we have this uh, super under the Zeta algebra which now projects into uh, the, the, the bosonic part, which is given by the uh, two-fold covering of the, uh, of the uh, under zeta algebra, the spin, uh, the symplectic algebra is P4, plus some additional odd contribution. And this contribution turns out to be a Clifford module. So we can actually extend, extend this operator B beta, which is described in terms of gamma matrices. So in, so we now introduce a new operator P beta on the super under zeta algebra, which contains additional copy of this operator P beta defined on this odd contribution of the algebra. And then we can use this in order to uh, induce an inner product on this algebra by contracting uh, the joint invariant supertrace 
with this operator pp time. Then by using this, one finds that this leads to the superhost monoclonal two action. So we can have a, a, a Young Mills type action principle with so FHF type action with F the curvature induced by this supercracking connection in the internal indices contracted with this beta deformed inner product, which we call the superhost monoclonal two action. And this way, one finds that this leads back to the host action of D equal four and N equal one ADS to gravity plus additional boundary terms. Can I ask the question? Yes, of course. So, so uh, this P beta, is mm -hmm. there any uniqueness? So, so uh, um, uh, do you have some? Uh, so, do you have some choice to choose something different than P beta, or it's uh, it's dictated by some uh, principle mm -hmm. that it should be invariant and then it's uniquely determined P beta? Yes, there are many uh, many reasons for this. So. Uh, so on the one hand, uh, if you uh, expand this action here, and you could of course uh, uh, use two different versions here, one from the uh, for the uh, Renzian part and one of the fermionic part, and then you find by expanding this uh, in order to regain the ordinary field equations of uh, supergravity at second order, these two operators have to match exactly. So only in this case you get uh, the same equations of motion. But on the other hand, this term also arises if you study the boundary theory, because if you would like to study the uh, you study the all possible boundary terms, you, you could in fact include to the to the theory and which are somehow compatible with the concept of supersymmetry. You find that the only possibility are those that arise from the Dolman-Sui action principle. So and also in this way, this fixes you this uh, this operator B beta. Thank you. There's in fact some particularity of the supersymmetric setting because you can argue that uh, if you would like to restore also supersymmetry on the boundary, the only possibility is to write down boundary terms that arise from the superhost McDonald's so reaction. And this has been uh, has been shown using standard variables by Adrian Nocoli and Doria in a series of works, and we have now extended this to host supergravity. In that case, one finds that indeed the unique boundary terms compatible with, with supersymmetry are those arising from the supposed McDonald's so action. This is some particularity of the supersymmetric setting because supersymmetry interrelates both bulk and boundary degrees of freedom, which is a contrast to the Bosonic theory. And now, uh, the question arises with the, whether we could also generalize this to uh, extended supersymmetry, mm -hmm. and the answer is yes. And we have done this for the n equal two case. And there, it turns out that now the supercritic connection is, uh, contains an additional uh, a spin three half fermion and some additional U one gauge field, also called the gravity photon field. And then again, we can formulate a young mills type action principle which is again of FHF type with F the curvature induced by this kinetic connection and this beta deformed inner product induced by an operator B beta, but which now is not defined on the algebra, but actually on the space of two forms taking values in the super algebra. And now it contains some additional, which is due to the Hodge operator uh, acting on the fermionic contributions uh, on the uh, gauge, U1 gauge field contribution. And now some, this is some interesting observation because this term here gives some uh, topological term, which is known from the from electrodynamics of QCD, also called also known as the theta term. So near here now the Barbarian music parameter literally has an interpretation in terms of what theta and we go reach, which is some interesting observation we can make here in this n equal two case. And in fact, to find this formalism uh, to the, this action principle, turns out that this discussion about the boundary theory is quite uh, important. So we can, we can start with the uh, bulk n equal two so gravity theory um, adapted to LKG. So including some amusy parameter and then study the boundary theory and ask the question, what is the most general boundary theory which is compatible with supersymmetry? And that way one found that uh, by including these unique, so the boundary theory is unique, this is the one, uh, the one result. And by combining this with the bulk theory that this uh, gives back uh, a, a mills type action principle, uh, as yeah, this uh, McDonald Mansuri type action principle. This was also result by Andrea Nocoli and Tauria in the standard uh, in the standard theory uh, using standard variables, and we have now extended this to this. Uh, this was some recent result by them, 
we have to extend this to the uh, to uh, host to the gravity. Other questions so far? No, I think you you can continue. Okay. Now, uh, if one takes a closer look on this action principle, now uh, this operator be beta. So uh, this is actually not a proper young list action because it contains this operator be beta, and this destroys the adjoint invariance of the super trace. So we uh, so the theory is not invariant on the on the whole super algebra, but uh, on the gauge transformations corresponding to the whole supersymmetry group, but just only on the under, underlying spin group. So this destroys this uh, gauge invariance and the whole supersymmetry gauge transformations. But this turns out to uh, change drastically in case of the Kyle theory. Because there, this operator B beta, so if uh, beta takes the values plus minus the imaginary unit, this operator P minus I now becomes a proper projection operator onto a, a proper sub super algebra of the, on the super under the algebra. So it now projects the uh, generators of the Lorentz algebra to some kind of subcomponents and also uh, projects the uh, Moyana generator to some uh, left-handed contribution. So this is why one, calls, uh, one can call this a Kyle theory. Now due to this fact, this operator now is indeed a, pro a proper projection operator. The hausmann gorman sui action in this Kyle limit now becomes manifestly invariant under large gauge symmetry given by this autosymplectic algebra OSP1 slash two. And since something similar also arises in the n equal two case, and now can be seen quite nicely in this formalism using this operator B beta. So, so, so the symmetry now comes up, becomes partially indeed a true gauge symmetry of the theory. In this case, it gives a very clear geometric explanation of the of, the, uh, of previous works of Philip, Kambini, Obregon, and uh, Ling and Smolin. It can also be generalized to n equal two case. So, uh, to the case of n and with two extended supersymmetry. And now here, uh, we can actually even rewrite this in an even more manifest way. And uh, to see this, one can introduce a so-called super Ashtick connection. So one takes this projection operator P and apply this to the super Cartan connection and gets a chiral subcomponent A plus, which contains now, besides this uh, standard uh, self dual Ashtick connection A plus, some additional uh, fermionic contribution which is given by the chiral subcomponents of the Rita Schwinger field, and plus some additional gauge contribution which arises from the asymmetric gauge group, in which case of n equal two is given by the U1 gauge field. It's the gravity photon field. So now by using this, one finds that the host super host McDonald's reaction and the chiral limit can be expanded in this form. Where now E is the so called super electric field, which is currently contributed to the uh, super connection, and plus some additional boundary term, which again, as I explained earlier, is now fixed uniquely if you impose supersymmetry on the invariance on the boundary. In the case of the Kyrie theory, it is given by a super Chin Simon theory with gauge group given by the autosymplectic algebra uh, D group OSP n slash 2. And also by uh, studying uh, the field equations, one finds that this leads to a coupling between the bulk and boundary degrees of freedom and are given in terms of uh, the pullback of the curvature of the self to connection A plus onto the boundary and reconciling this to the uh, superlectic field also pulled back to the boundary. This is in fact an intriguing similarity to uh, standard boundary conditions arising from the isolated horizon formalism in the loop quantum gravity. So based on these observations, it seems to be that A plus is indeed a natural candidate to quantize supergravity in the framework of AQG. And by its very definition, it now contains both gravity and meta degrees of freedom. So it leads to a more unified description and also to a more fundamental way of quantizing fermions in AQG. And furthermore, since now gauge symmetry is treated in terms of, uh, so supersymmetry is treated in terms of a gauge symmetry, this also substantially simplifies the constraints because it also partially solves them by imposing uh, gauge invariance, uh, as already done in AQG studying super spin network states. And also the boundary theory has a very natural, uh, very, uh, very, uh, nice form given by a super chin Simon theory. So this is a natural candidate to study inner boundaries in the framework of AQG, and study, for instance, PPA states or black holes. And interestingly, there are some similar observations made in string theory recently by Mikhail van Witten, who found that also Super Chin Simon's theories with gauge group given by autosymplectic D group also naturally arises in context of string theory if 
from studies to resume engineering boundary, uh, boundary uh, conditions. But of course, there are also issues because we're dealing with a complex theory and also so with complex variables and also with a non-compact gauge group. So we have to deal with the non-compactness of the gauge group and related conditions. So this is some issue we have to deal with. So now, at the end, I would like to give a uh, brief overview on the construction of, uh, of the quantum theory and also um, on uh, possible applications in context of black holes. So uh, in order to, to uh, construct the quantum theory, and uh, we would like to uh, adapt a standard tools of AQG. So we have to study the allonomies. So the uh, uh, also known as the power transport map induced by this gauge with A plus and which these would like to use to study Hilbert spaces and then to construct spin network states as a suitable uh, subclass of states in the Hilbert space. But at this, uh, at this stage, I already have to uh, clarify that we are, we are, due to the non-compactness of the gauge group, we cannot uh, define the full Hilbert space in terms of an inductive uh, limit of uh, Hilbert spaces also to graphs because uh, uh, yeah, due to uh, so uh, to the issue of uh, to um, to lift the centrally consistency to the active limit, but we at least can formulate Hilbert spaces for a fixed graph gamma. But it's still unclear how to generalize this to to a full inductive limit. But now, if one restricts to one graph to a fixed graph, one can indeed formulate a Hilbert space and also construct the spin metric states. In that case, one finds that gauge invariant states are given now by so called super spinetric states. So, these super spinetric states are now described again in terms of graphs, which are embedded in space and consisting of edges, which carry now uh, labels given by the irreducible representations of the uh, super gauge group, and now consist of uh, the isospin quantum number J and some additional charge quantum numbers Q. Now, interestingly, in contrast to the uh, standard, qu standard quantization scheme and look on gravity, the fermionic degrees of freedom are not localized at the vertices, but instead uh, smeared along the one dimensional edges of the graph. And this is indeed a, uh, this is some consequence which, uh, consequence which arises naturally from the formalism and is treated and is rooted in the geometric formulation of supergravity. And also, it turns out that, super, that uh, supersymmetry leads to a channelization of ordinary Riemannian geometry. So one can replace the standard area quantity by some super area quantity associated to some two dimensional surfaces embedded in space. And, and it follows that these great, uh, this super area quantity or a great area quantity can be re expressed in terms of uh, the super electric field E canonically conjugate to the, to the super Ashton connection A. Plus. And in doing so, one finds that this can indeed be implemented similar to the standard area operator in loop on gravity in terms of a well-defined operator in the Hilbert space. And for instance, for the n equal one case, one finds that this uh, this great uh, this great area operator, by acting on superspinetric states, these superspinetric states indeed become eigenstates of this operator with these eigenvalues, which are in uh, Treating similarity to the standard eigenvalues of uh, standard area operator look on gravity, but uh, has some change here. So start, uh, instead of one, we have one half. In fact, we can generalize this to uh, not just finite dimensional representation, representations, but also infinite dimensional representations. And also, this was some recent work by us. So um, we have constructed so called principal series representations of the uh, autosymplectic review D group OSP1 slash two. So in this case, this J could be an arbitrary complex number. This has uh, the reason to for con uh, the reason to consider these kind of representations is to resolve relative conditions. This is some recent work of uh, some earlier some earlier work of uh, Perez and uh, Ashur. And we try to, to extend this to uh, to a supersymmetric setting. And finally, I would like to give you an uh, a concrete example which demonstrates that this formalism can indeed be used to. Uh, uh, for concrete physical applications, so to study, for instance, supersymmetric black holes in AKG. Now, as I said, uh, the host McDonald's zoo action in presence of inner boundaries leads to a boundary term, which in case of the Cairo theory is given by a Chubertin Simons theory. 
And so in the n equal one case, it follows that the gauge group is given by the Olsen Black Lee group OSP1 slash two. And in the quantum theory, it now follows that uh, this leads to additional boundary degrees of freedom on the boundary, which, uh, which arise from uh, the intersection of superspinetric states in the bulk intersecting at the boundary. So this gives new Chin-Simons degrees of freedom. And so by Boltzmann, according to Boltzmann, this suggests to, uh, to associate a, a non-trivial entropy to the cos, and by describing them in terms of the number of microstates generated by these superspinetric states. And we have, now, and we have now computed this number of microstates for the n equal one supersymmetric, uh, supersymmetric case. And there, since uh, super Simon theories with complex gauge group and uh, are not that well known, we have uh, followed a different strategy and uh, considered instead uh, super super Simon theories with a, uh, with a gauge group given by the corresponding uh, compactified gauge group. So the so-called unitary autosymplectic group, this is a compact gauge group which has SU2 as the underlying uh, uh, bosonic gauge group. Then by considering this compact form of this, uh, of this layer of this uh, gauge group, we have then computed the number of microstates. In that case, one finds that this number of microstates is given by this explicit formula, this integral formula. So N is the number of punctures. So the number of punctures arising from the, uh, on the boundary arising from the intersection of the superspinetric state uh, with the boundary. And dj is uh, the dimension of the finite dimensional representations of the compact, compactified gauge group. And by considering this, uh, this integral formula, we then performed a specific analytic, analytic, uh, analytic continuation to the uh, full uncompact gauge group, OSP. And that way we find that the entropy defined as in terms of the logarithm of number of states on the boundary is indeed given by area over four plus some low order quantum corrections. And this area of four, uh, this law area of four is indeed the semi-classical result predicted by Bekenstein and Hawking. So this result demonstrates that the formalism can indeed be used to, uh, for, for, uh, for concrete physical applications. And also in this way, one can uh, find exact agreement with the semi-classical computations. Okay, so to summarize, we have studied the classical theory in particular, we have uh, the study of the gauge theoretic approach to n equal one and also n equal two extended D equal for host supergravity, plus another uh, discussion about the boundary theory, which turns out, turns out to be unique, to uniquely fixed if one imposes supersymmetry invariance on the boundary. But then I also have studied the Cairo theory and have found that this has uh, intriguing structure in terms of super young mass theory, leading to the notion of a super architecture connection. And also the boundary theory as the uh, uh, as the structure of a super John Simons theory, and it's also uniquely fixed if one imposes supersymmetry invariance. And then, based on these observations, we have constructed the quantum theory in a rigorous way, so studying superspinetric states and also super area operator. And in this way, we also found intriguing similarities to the standard quantization scheme of fermions in AQG. But this was actually not part of this talk, but uh, there are some underlying, underlying structures one encounters in this formalism, which are in similarity, in treating similarity to standard quantization scheme of fermions like IQG. Then finally, we have applied this formalism to study, for instance, supersymmetric black holes and find, uh, for instance, semi uh, uh, accordance with the uh, semi classical Bekenstein Hawking area law in highest order. And also, we have applied this in the context of symmetry reduced model to study, for instance, supersymmetric cosmological models. But also, we have encountered difficulties, mainly due to the non compactness of the gauge group and the writing conditions which uh, make it hard, quite hard to implement the continuum limit in the theory to construct a functional measure on the inductive limit and also to solve, uh, solve the relative conditions which are also, in, even in the bosonic theory, are unknown how to solve them. But it has been, but we have studied the symmetry reduced model and there indeed we have found that this, these difficulties all can be solved rigorously and, uh, and consistently. And this gives us hope that maybe we can also extend this sometime to the food theory. Or at least gives us an idea how to solve them in the fourth theory. So, to give an outlook on future, future research, on the first hand, we'd like to, of course, deal with uh, these difficulties and construct uh, rigorously the inductive limit of Hilbert spaces. Furthermore, we'd like to generalize this formalism to include uh, supergravity theories with ex n extended supersymmetry with n greater than equal to three, 
in particular, we'd like to uh, include the NQ4 case NQ4, because this one is the one which is uh, studied, for instance, by um, Strominger and Wafa studying the entropy of supersymmetric black holes. So this would be some quite nice uh, framework. Also the NQ8 case, because this is the one which is recently studied also in a non uh, perturbative uh, supergravity, because there are hints that maybe this theory may be perturbatively finite. And finally, uh, furthermore, we'd like to study uh, the case of a, non of a vanishing cosmological constant because so far we have to treat uh, the case of a, a non-vanishing cosmological constant. And there are some recent works by Concha, Navera, and Rodriguez who have studied also have also found a McDormand Sui type formulation of these kind of uh, theories. Maybe we could also generalize this to uh, to host to gravity. And also, we'd like to use this formalism in order to, and we have done this already, to study, for instance, supersymmetric black holes and to find relations to the entropy computations and string theory. And in this context, I find it quite interestingly to, uh, to compare this with uh, recent results by Mikhailov and Witten, who found that uh, by studying boundary theories and string theory and also uh, considering uh, supersymm supersymmetry boundary conditions, that this also naturally leads to super Simons theories with gauge group given by the, uh, by the same gauge group that we encounter in, uh, in loop on gravity. So this uh, somehow hints that maybe if one, uh, so if one studies super Simons theories both in uh, string theory and loop on gravity, that this may enable one to find relations between both string theory and loop on gravity. Okay, now this is such as a summary of, uh, of, the, of the papers we have. Uh, they can find the results that I've presented you, and uh, that's it. So thank you very much for the nice talk. And I think there are some questions. So maybe Jure can ask, because I think he wants to ask now. Yes, yes, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, I, 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 uh, well, this contain, uh, concerns this boundary term you mentioned, and I, I think I missed something. Uh, this uh, reason for the boundary term is it the one that you uh, that you uh, that he is analog to the one of uh, Gibbons talking boundary terms for the bounded region because you want to have uh, the action differentiable or is it anything else, something else too? Yeah, it's indeed a supersymmetry invariance in this case. So if you uh, so you have uh, you have. Um, this actually also is some, um, some result of this geometric approach because um, in this geometric approach, you would like to describe supersymmetries in terms of, uh, because you have this whole formalism on a super manifold, so also some supersymmetric generalization of a manifold. And in this case, you can interpret, super, uh, in this cutting geometric framework, you can interpret uh, supersymmetry transformations in terms of super diffeomorphisms, some diffeomorphism in the odd part of your super manifold which consists of a standard bosonic manifold and some additional fermionic contribution in the odd direction. So you can interpret it as, kind of, as kind of a fiber bundle, where now the fibers are the fermionic degrees of freedom. And the uh, supersymmetry transformations are tangent to the, uh, to the fibers. And now using this formalism, it turns out that uh, this leads to certain uh, conditions on, on the curvature, that's, which are called reonomic, uh, re reonomic conditions. And if you study these conditions, so uh, just uh, so you, the renomic conditions are necessary to interpret and these are to interpret supersymmetry transformations in, in terms of super diffeomorphisms. And then you can find that uh, if you have the bike theory and you would like to add the boundary theory in order to have these supersymmetry transformations again interpreted in terms of again, in terms of super diffeomorphisms, this uniquely fixes uh, the boundary theories. So you cannot actually so the only possibility to have the interpretation in terms of super supersymmetry transformations in, in terms of super diffeomorphisms, this uniquely fixes the boundary theory. Good, but uh, okay, good. So, so I need to study your papers, but this in principle doesn't really, doesn't have anything to do with the standard uh, gibbons hawking term that you add for the uh, for to the action on on the on the boundary region just to make it differentiable. So this no. is completely different reason, right? That's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay, this so. is yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go go. And this is also a. Uh, and there's a difference also. So you can of course also study similar. Uh, so you can, for instance, study a similar idea in a standard bosonic theory. In this case, the only symmetries you like to preserve are uh, Lorentz transformations and uh, diffeomorphisms. And in that case, uh, the boundary theory turns out to be not uniquely fixed. 
because these uh, the diffeomorphisms and Lorentz transformations do not mix bulk and bound degrees of freedom. But this changes in context of supersymmetry because supersymmetry interrelates both bulk and bound degrees of freedom. And then uh, you find that imposing SUSY invariance uh, uniquely fixes the boundary theory because the bulk theory, by studying supersymmetry transformations on the bulk theory, interrelates bulk and bound degrees of freedom. So you have to fix uniquely the boundary theory in order to recover SUSY invariance. Well, I, I'm not completely sure I agree with you on this on, on the, in the case of, bio, of bosonic theory, or purely bosonic theory. But this is something, well, okay. I, I hope we will have an opportunity to chat at some point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so, so maybe other questions? So, so I, I, have a, I have a small question. Mm -hmm. So, so you you mentioned that you you have applied uh, this theory to cosmology to cosmology and the black hole. So, is there any uh, phenomenological result by using this to 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 cosmological to cosmology and the black hole? So maybe uh, so the main reason so to something like uh, the the bounce or this big bounce in LQC or something like this black hole to white hole transport in. In this, in this, in this Schwarzschild black hole theory. Yeah, so this would be another future research. So to study also dynamical black holes. But the main reason to study now uh, these uh, these static black holes we have considered here is mainly uh, to interrelate somehow ideas from uh, string theory, because these uh, because the. Um, a string theory in order to make a string a contact from string theory to phenomenology are these black uh, the Susie black holes and these are one of the main results one has obtained there so the one reason uh, so one possibility to to find uh, uh, to find uh, because we have inter yeah, maybe let me explain this in a different way so we have uh, in loop one gravity we have a consistent uh, interpretation uh, consistent uh, description of the entropy uh, the elevation of the entropy for physical black holes and these are non supersymmetric black holes but in, uh, in string theory one has uh, consistent computations for the black hole entropy uh, for just supersymmetric black holes so these are two, two disjoint, uh, disjoint families so in order to get uh, in a relation in order to find relations between computation in string theory and uh, loop on gravity one has all has to extend our this formalism, AQG formalism, to the supersymmetric setting, so describe supersymmetric black holes. That's one, that's one of the central reason why we would like to consider supersymmetric black holes in AQG. But there's also some differences. So because string theory only considers the bosonic subpart of the theory and has to study DPS boundary conditions in order to get the consistency with, uh, with supersymmetry. But we also, in this formalism, also naturally include fermionic degrees of freedom. So there's some, some generalization, if you wish. But uh, yeah, but there's some recent works in string theory uh, for studying uh, supersymmetric Simon theories, and we have supersymmetric Simon in IQG, and uh, somehow this was something fascinating, I think, to find relations between both. This is why black holes may be, uh, supersymmetric black holes may be the key cornerstone to find such relations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But but for this for this supersymmetry black hole, now you have calculated this, this entropy, right? Yes. By using this. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so we this, have uh, this is the only specific readout, or you also have some other types of readout. Yeah, we have also this was not uh, part of my talk now, but we have also studied uh, the cosmological models. Uh huh. So uh, good question now. So we have um, we have studied a symmetry reduced model, and there also because normally if you consider which is astrophysical cosmology. Fermionic degrees of freedom are not compatible with uh, the, uh, not compatible with spatial isotropy. But now in a supersymmetric setting, this changes because we have this uh, in the current theory we have this enlarged gauge symmetry. Now you can study uh, Ashton connections or super Ashton connections that are not uh, that are uh, spatially isotropic up to not just SU two gauge but also super gauge transformations. And then you find that this indeed. Uh, leads to a symmetry reduced connection that besides the uh, symmetry reduced Ashton connection, bosonic Ashton connection also in contain, contains additional fermionic contributions. And then by doing, and then we have used this symmetry reduced connection to study the quantum theory and uh, also the implementation of constraints. 
And then we have, for instance, the study of the semi-classical limit, and we have obtained the huckle hawking state of the theory. And also we have found that the, uh, that the singularity is resolved in the theory. But at this stage, we cannot study the dynamics because we have to enlarge the theory in order to include and uh, have further degrees of freedom. Because you can consider this as kind of a standard gravity without additional, fermi uh, to, uh, additional matter. So we have in that indeed have to enlarge this theory to include further matter theories of freedom in the theory and study, for instance, the dynamics of the theory. But at least at this stage, we have consistency with results obtained in the co context of the Masonic theory. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, so maybe I will have a question. Mm -hmm. So when you have this Hiral action, so at the, I think middle of your talk, Mm -hmm. So then suddenly there appeared this super electric uh, uh, electric field. Yes. So so uh, why why it's appearing only in the chiral action, not in the non-chiral? Because in non-chiral you don't have this uh, uh, additional field. Yes, and this comes mainly from this operator the beta. So. Um... Of course, if you uh, so, if you would like to give a so, if you would study the canonical theory, so you decompose this in a way, and then this operator beta, so this beta dependent, uh, this beta dependent term, and this operator, so this one here, this destroys uh, this adjoint invariance. So this field, if you can, of course, include fermionic degrees of freedom in this uh, this electric field, because also the uh, you have uh, besides the uh, SU2 gauge, uh, SU2 ester connection, and it's common conjugate electric field. You also have the uh, Maria, uh, the spin three half Richter Schwinger field, and it's common conjugate momentum. Oh. But you cannot include this into uh, into the electric field to get some proper adjoint, uh, some proper superelectric field, which which forms under the adjoint representation. And this comes from this operator B beta and this beta dependent term you get there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are there other questions? So if not, let's us thank the speaker again and we maybe stop Hello. the official part. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Ah, okay, I didn't hear you. Uh, I have a question about this uh, area spectrum. So, so, it, so, so, um, so J is is a complex number, and um, so what, what? So, 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 this spectrum of area is 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 um, are complex numbers. A priori, yes. I see, and. Uh, so the operators you consider are not uh, so the joint at this stage not yes so um so if you consider for instance standard area operator and the aqg so for a mesi parameter beta you have some beta term here so some beta here but mm -hmm. now if you take the uh, the limit beta to minus i you get the minus i term and if you would just consider uh, the standard um, finite dimensional representations of s 2 r you uh, get here a real quantity and a imaginary quantity here. So the spectrum and standard uh, AQG all, also in the current limit would be uh, imaginary. But you can so resolve this by instead considering a subclass of rotations, so which are infinite dimensional. So it's also called the principal series of s 2 c And studying these kind of uh, infinite, uh, infinite dimensional representations, this indeed becomes real. I see. Some, and, and the then, same also applies to the supersymmetric setting. We have derived this series for all P1 slash 2. And also there we found that for these uh, subclass of representations, you get a real spectrum. And this okay. are these ones we have considered for the Tucker entropy computation. Yeah, this was exactly my, my second question. Yes. <laughs> In what way you, 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 you consider black hole entropy with this complex mm -hmm. formula? But, but you're saying that, so, so you say that there is some subset of states for which this is this is real yes it's a real quantity and then for these subclasses you get the right black entropy i see and then the area spectrum is the same as for uh, 
the loop quantum gravity or is it? Yeah, so in the limit of large J, this is the same spectrum. Uh -huh. But for finite ones, you also get the contributions from femoral activities of freedom. I see, I see. So, and technically, what are you counting? Uh, what, what, what states are you counting that account to, to entropy? Yeah, so uh, these are gauge degrees of freedom induced by the super spin network states on the boundary, but also they encode fermionic degrees of freedom. But uh, this is somehow something you, this is imposed by gauge invariance. So because we have now supersymmetry in terms of, uh, so we have uh, a large gauge symmetry. So the, uh, the area operator, which is, uh, which, uh, which accounts for this gauge symmetry is actually the super area operator, not just the mesonic one. So, mm -hmm. And this is in fact some result um, because there are some older works uh, who found that uh, maybe these familiar degrees of freedom in the supersymmetric setting may account to the first law of black hole mechanics. So that somehow these uh, familiar degrees of freedom also take part in these conservations. And this is also encountered here. So these familiar degrees of freedom also uh, play a role in the black hole interpretive computation. I see. And what about? And the uh, Hamiltonian or, or constrained operators, in what way do you do you approach it? Yeah, so the, um, in the black hole context, you mean? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, the, what, what do you do about the dynamics? Yeah, so dynamics, uh, we didn't solve in the full theory, but we uh, solved them in the, in the, in the symmetry used context, because mm -hmm. uh, there's actually some difference now because um, the Hamiltonian constraint arises at second order by studying uh, the constraint algebra between the SUSY constraints. So the SUSY constraints are somehow the uh, square root of the Hamiltonian constraint. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so you do not have to con study the Hamiltonian constraint at first place, but you have to study the SUSY constraints. So if you propose SUSY, const uh, SUSY invariance, you already solve the Hamiltonian constraint because uh, due to this relation here. Yeah. So the Susie constraint commutator induces the Hamiltonian constraint. And this we have, uh, that this is indeed the case in the quantum theory we have proven as you say in the symmetry used model. So indeed we have this, uh, this close connection between, uh, so we have the exact agreement between the, uh, uh, the quantum algebra and the, uh, the Poisson algebra in the classical theory. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much and we maybe stop recording and uh, but I, I still keep the link open. <laughs>